What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Beneath the Mountain, a Dwarf Fortress Builder defense game where you will try to keep your king safe from an endless horde of enemy orcs and creepy crawly beasties that live beneath the surface. This game has a really good art style. I think it's a really good looking game and it's out for free right now on itch.io if you wanted to play this development build. I'll have a link for you down below for that. It's planning on coming out sometime around January on Steam, but we've got access just due to it being on itch.io, so we're gonna check it on out. But be sure you check it on out too. Vet the things that I say. Uh, by all means, you know, if you feel like I missed something or I failed to point something out, jump on in. Knock the game out yourself and get a good idea of how it plays. Uh, other than that, down below you'll find a link to my Discord. That's the central hub for my entire community and I'd love to have you. We're going to dive on into a game, and we've got to generate a world here first. What kind of world do we want to live in? I mean, obviously, like, a peaceful world would be the best flavor of world, but I'll accept whatever they give me. That looks pretty good. There's a lot of minerals right there that I'm actually, like, a fan of. Yeah, I like that. I likes that a lot. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. So the, uh, the ultimate goal of this game is just don't let your king get killed. This game is very, very hard. You should prep yourself for, like, the difficulty of the game. I don't know if that's just due to alpha balancing or due to intent, but this is a game that is actively out to destroy you. Uh, you should be really Johnny on the spot, constantly doing something in this game. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, I'm going to hold on. i got to re-keybind something real fast. There we go. For whatever reason, the pause is not on the space bar. And, like, I find myself hitting the space bar all the time while I'm playing this, and it just drives me nuts. All right, back on in. So this is our colony. We've got our mining center right here. This is where we can hire some more miners or we can get some more engineers. Our king is right here, Torvald Metal Guard. That's the guy that we got to defend above all else, no matter what. Uh, we need to take a look around, and we need to kind of figure out where things are going to be at. Now, we can mine the walls. That is an option. And we can take a look around. Unfortunately, you can't really interact with the walls unless you're, like, unpaused. Uh, but we need to find walls that have a high gold ratio. That's really what I'm looking for. I'd like to clear this little area out just to give us some more building space because as of right now, we have a none. And so I'm going to set my miners on that. I'm also going to train a few more miners just to make the process go a little bit faster. And I'm going to truck down this way, and I'm going to look for anything that's got, like, a tangible value down towards the entrance to our base. If there's anything good, so every time you look at a tile, the hammer is basically the hardness of the tile. It's how long it takes your miners to get through that tile and destroy it. And then the gold value is how much minerals are inside that wall that are automatically sold when they bring it back to base. So those are the things to keep in mind. Uh, it looks like there's actually not that many great nodes around, so I'm just going to bring the king back. We'll kind of deploy him back in over here, I think. So do we have anything good in any of these directions? No, we pretty much just have, like, lukewarm resources on all sides. Bummer, because we're going to need a lot of gold coming in. Oh, there's a good one right there. 107 in that one right there. 21, 103 right there. Okay. Yeah, we can get those two. That's good. I actually, I just need building space for right now, so I'm not even altogether that worried about clearing out walls. Uh, it looks like we've got some decent minerals right there, so we'll queue those on up. For right now, we're really close to our mining center where they drop off all the minerals, so we don't need to worry about transit or moving things around altogether that much. We just need to focus on getting some money together, increasing our population, and getting ready for the first orc wave, which is going to arrive somewhere around day 500-ish. Your engineers, when they're idle and they don't have anything to build, they will beautify the area by building walls and illumination in any area that's dark. Uh, so the enemies can't, like, spawn inside of there or do any crazy stuff. You can already see that there's spiders inside that cave right there, so we'll want to watch out for popping the cork on that problem. I find that I actually have a lot of trouble in this game time managing and just figuring out what I need to do, where I need to do it. But we got more miners coming on out. We've got the money at the moment, so I think it'd be a good idea to increase our pop cap by putting in a house right there. I absolutely love the building design in this game. I think it all looks really, really good. It all looks fantastic. Like, they've really mastered that aesthetic idea that came from, like, Tolkien and Warhammer Fantasy, where dwarves' architecture is complicated artwork that's made out of simple components, basically. Like, they take wedges 
they take squares, they take basic shapes, and then they kind of like weave them together into something that looks far more detailed. And I think that's something that this game has really, really captured with its art style. The lighting is also done very, very well and is quite fantastic in my opinion. I think it looks great. So there's our pop cap increased real fast. I'm going to focus on more miners for right now. The more miners, the better. Basically, I need a workforce that can clear out like this entire area so that we can build. And I think the faster we hit that population, the better off we will be. Now, obviously, this is going to necessitate us having to build a lot more kind of houses and whatnot, which is going to be resource intensive. But if we can get this work done in a rapid pace and in like a good manner, I think I can be kind of happy with it. I do, where was that expensive tile over here? There was a really good tile over here somewhere that was worth a bunch of money. Eh, I can't seem to locate it, so I guess we'll just kind of leave it where it's at for right now. They're going to clear out another slot right there. I'll more than likely drop off another house on that side. They come back and they drop off their resources whenever they have 25 gold, in case you're wondering how that works. These guys are building roads and stuff right now, which I'm okay with. I think we may have to open up a cave just to get access to tiles that are worth a little bit more money. For right now, we're facing an economic barrier with our digging that is going to come back home to roost, and it is going to cause problems for us. So I may pop open a cave early, even though I normally don't like doing that. Uh, the other half is that I just need to get, like, building space. We have nowhere to put anything right now, and so hopefully our miner spam right here will solve that problem for us. All right, the area's clearing out. We don't have a lot of money to be spoken of just yet. But we may still be viable. I don't know. We may die on the first wave. We may die on the second wave. We may die on the third wave. Thus far, I don't think I've made it further than the third wave. The third wave has always, like, cinnamon toast wrecked me. And so, you know, not a lot of success with this game so far. It is a tightly tuned game where you got to get everything right. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. Uh, they are doing what they need to do over here. I could probably knock this out over here to make some more space. But, like... I don't know if it's immediately necessary for right now. We do have money coming on in. That's really, really good because I'm going to build a barracks very shortly that's going to allow me to train up some more warriors so that we can get like, I don't know, if we can get like 10 or 15 guys before the first wave. That's what I prefer. We're about a third of the way towards the arrival of the first wave. And so we'll keep that in our hearts and in our dreams and in our minds for right now. I don't suppose there's any good tiles connect. Yeah, all the good tiles open up that cave. Oh, and there's another cave over there, too. Okay, so we'll cancel that out. Looks like we can go down to there, though. All right, so we've got 500 bucks. i got to wait for this tile to be gone right here, but then we're going to make a barracks that's just going to be right up on this corner. Get out the way, little miner. Get out the way. There we go. Move, miner. Get out the way. Get out the way, miner. Get out the way. Okay, the barracks is up, which I couldn't be happier about. That's really, really great. So I think we should probably get some axe guards moving. Unfortunately, we're pop capped right now, so I'm going to cancel him, and i got to build a house next. I've got space to build a house over here, and I've made a couple of trails inside the walls that lead to valuable tiles that will give us 200, 300 plus gold each. And so that's really, really nice. I'll probably mine that out too, and then we'll just kind of make our pinch point up here maybe. Yeah, there we go. That's fine by me. Every now and again, there's like a little audio bug where it plays like a loud noise. I don't know exactly why. You may hear it in the background. I just kind of chalk it up to like alpha things. All right, so with 200 bucks all ready to go, we can drop another house in. And I will more than likely put that house right there. Hopefully the engineers can get on it sooner rather than later. Are they getting... Oh, they're getting two gold from every smack right there. That's what I like to see. I do wish that multiple miners could work the same tile simultaneously, but I don't think it works like that. I think they just kind of swap with each other and whatnot as they get more and more time to play around with. We are going to need to get some kind of barricades and traps up and running too, but really our limiting reagent right now is the amount of cash that we're bringing on in. The sweet, succulent gold that makes dwarvish society go around and makes your beard grow long and strong. Okay, so the house is up and running. That means that we are in good shape to make a few more dwarves. I'm going to make... Let's go ahead and just get some warriors up and trained because I'd like to pop the wall on one of these spider caves because it looks like all the valuable tiles are inside the spider cave. Yeah, so we're going to have to basically... What we'll want to do is we'll want to rebuild our mining center over here and have them radiate outwards from it 
Uh, that way they're always within close proximity of the drop-off. We're getting kind of far right now and we're losing our utility. Please do not chop down that wall. If you chop down that wall, I'm going to be deeply and just... I will be so dwarvish upsetty spaghetti with you and you won't like me when I'm dwarvish upsetty spaghetti, okay? Give me a few more warriors. And those four should be good enough to get what I want done over here so that we can pop the wall right here. Yeah, I'll get it going. Where's the king at? King, I require you. Oh, the king is underneath. We're beneath the mountain, but also beneath a large construction building. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we've got about 200 days to play with before the orcs get here. If you guys go ahead and get these walls down for me, I would appreciate that revenue stream. And then I will do my damnedest bring in a couple more of these dwarf warriors. These two are like special or something. They're just like belly bumping and headbutting each other. It's a dwarvish sport, okay? If you don't know how to play belly bump headbutt, how are you going to be a dwarf? You know what I mean? Like it's Listen, let's not disparage the dwarves for the pastimes and activities that they enjoy, okay? I think this wall is going to go down first. This one's got a lot more hardness. The miners will fight. They're very, very weak. They're not very strong, though. But they will fight. They will stand their ground versus other units that absolutely do not stand their ground. Uh, we need to... I don't know if this is going to be enough units. I don't know if we have enough money coming in. We do have money coming in. Oh, we got three more warriors training? Oh, we got plenty of warriors then, dude. We'll be okay. I think we'll be all right. Splatty gonna be all right. Chopping down the wall cave. I need you guys to chop that down faster so that we can kick off the great and glorious Spider Fight 5000. All right, boys, into the breach. It has been opened. Uh, I want all my warriors in there. We'll put in the king too because he hits like an absolute semi truck. And so I think he will help with like some of the larger Spiderians. Like, you can't really enemy select. That is one thing that I think the game could work on, is, like, there's no red circle around the enemies, and when you click on them, you're not actually telling your guys to attack them. You're telling your guys to move to the position that they currently occupy. And, and so, like, sometimes they take a lot of damage before they kick into, like, auto-fighting mode, which I think is actually, like, actively a problem and something that needs to be looked at and fixed. Uh, but aside from that, like, when it comes to RTSs, you want to have precision in control so that, like, the people that are very high-functioning in an RTS you know, setting uh, can actually make full accordance of that ability. We need a workshop. I'm going to put a workshop in right there so we can start deploying booby traps. It looks like we got most of the spiders. I'm going to have them continue to look around. All the good stuff is over here. Okay, King, come back over here. And then I would also like to have all of my dwarves come over here. There are formations and stuff that you can go after. I don't know if they give any kind of, like, tangible benefits or anything else like that. But you guys start mining out all these crazy valuable walls over here. That's your new job, is to make as much money as dwarfenly possible. Yep, that's pretty much it. You guys are just going to work around the clock to make me more muns. And once you have finished, I will say well done's. Uh, if I wanted to make another mining center, that costs 400 bucks. Oh, man. That's pricey. How many caves are over here, out of curiosity? Like, are there good directions I can actually go in? Or did I basically... I think I only liberated, like, this chamber over here. I will show you a fun trick that you can play around with. If you've got the money, if you think it's worth it, uh, what you can do is you can put in a mining track, like so. It is a little bit expensive. I do think they should maybe make these cheaper. But basically what you can do is you can make a mining track and they will ride the rails to get back and drop off their stuff faster. Like so. Now, the one problem is it's one way. So they will ride the cart this way, but they won't ride the cart back. I think if they rode the cart back, it would actually be really, really appreciated. But as you can see, it allowed that little guy to get back faster than all three of these who left before they finished constructing the thing. The downside is it's very, very expensive to build the railroad tracks. And so you kind of want to have like an equitable area that you're mining before you sort of lean into that stuff. I think we got most of the goodies over here. I'll have them 
chop down all these walls. It looks like there's another good tile right there too, but we'll kind of worry about that a little bit later. We're kind of dilly-dally shilly-shallying right now. Uh, we do have trap parts, so we could start building traps to help these guys out. I think the best thing we can do for now is to add more housing. Unfortunately, it won't let me put it right there, probably due to the fact that there's spiders everywhere. So, not an option for the moment. But we can put in, I mean, I could have it face like so. Yeah, do that. We'll do like another little suburb. All right, so the orc army is coming. I actually overestimated when they were going to be here. I thought they arrived on like day 550, but apparently day four something is good enough. Hopefully we can get some cash flowing because we are broke as a joke. I would like the ability to relocate buildings for like a time allotment or like a loss in, you know, like half price. You can move a building and it takes like the full rebuild time. That would be really, really nice because then I could just relocate this over here and they could just instantaneously drop off all the money that they're making. Unfortunately, not exactly an option just yet. I do want all you guys working over here, although it is kind of, like, critically dark on this side. You can keep working on random walls, too, just in case all the jobs are taken by other dwarves. So we've got a gap right there. That's actually a big cave. Okay, don't chop that. Don't chop that either. We'll just kind of leave that alone for a minute. Uh, the new house is up. We've got these guys now spawning. So we will get... Oh, I don't know. Maybe a couple of... Give me give me a couple more of the axe guys. And we'll just wait and see how money comes in over time. Because I need to build trap lines, too, to soften up the enemy before they get here. The traps are a little bit difficult to deal with. Sometimes, like, so there's, like, spear traps that sort of do the Indiana Jones thing. And they fire spears out of the walls. And, like, darts out of the walls. What I found with those is that, unfortunately, they fire too early. Like, the... So the, the enemy mobs have different speeds based on whether they're goblins or whatever else. And there's usually like one or two mobs that are way faster than the rest and they use up all your traps. And then all the bigger, thicker guys that you actually wanted to soften up just kind of meander up to your base and punch you in the face repeatedly. And so that's, a, that's an issue that I've run into with time here and like experience with the game. But uh, just, you know, watch out for it. The traps are cool. Don't get me wrong. Like the traps do stuff. They work all right, but um, they tend to cause problems, too. Like, you spend a bunch of money building traps and kill, like, one goblin on his way in, and then you're like, oh, now I feel bad about my financial decisions. Another compounding factor besides financial decisions that you're going to have to deal with is that your dwarves don't heal in between combats unless you've built two very expensive buildings in order to make that happen. you got to build a brewery, and you got to build a tavern. And so anyways, they'll go get food whenever they're wounded, but it can be kind of an issue. I could put in a flamethrower. That'd be kind of cool. What does a flamethrower do? 400 damage over three seconds. Yeah, I think that idea sounds rad as hell. I'm going to do it. Oh, no. My resources are insufficient, dude. If only that was the first time someone has told me that. It's a painful experience learning that you're deficient, you know? Sometimes uh, you got enough, sometimes you don't. All right, boys, how's our money-making operation? You guys opened a cave, didn't you? Oh, you guys opened a cave. Oh, no. Okay, so you guys come all the way back over here. Stop going inside the cave with, like, your foolish efforts to illuminate and make this area have torches because there's spiders in there. And if you touch those cocoons, we are all going to die. Every single one of us. So now I've got to make a hard decision. The orc warband is on its way in, and there's just physically no way around that. What I would suggest is that we just put in a cheap little barricade right there so that nobody can get in there. That's what I suggest. We put in a little barricade. We'll deal with it after this wave. I don't want to deal with it after this wave, but we will deal with it after this wave. Uh, go ahead and... I don't know if another trap's worth it, but 300 damage sounds pretty spicy. So, like, maybe we'll do another dragon trap. Sure, why not? And then, so I can't put those booby traps right there, but what I can do is I can put in booby traps on the in-betweens right here which I think will actually be pretty fruitful. 
And so I like fruit. I don't know which my favorite one is. Probably bananas based on volume eaten in all honesty. Like I think if you looked at like a real regression of like how much fruit I eat, like bananas would be the one that I think I consume the most. They're probably not my favorite with regards to flavors though. Like I just eat a lot of bananas because they're good for you and they make me feel good. But like, you know. I don't want to pop open this cave over here either. I'm getting myself into trouble, dude. As dwarves tend to do, I'm digging too greedily and too deeply. There we go. A little bit more money for the rest of the trap line right there. And then I'd like to put in another one right here, but I think they're going to be here before too long, so I don't think there's any way for me to get that situated. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is we're going to need to put up a brewery and a tavern so that my dwarves can heal. We have a really good cave. I'll say that. We've got a lot of money. Like, we are mining very, very valuable nodes, like, all over our base. Oh, they're here. So, 11 orcs have arrived. Let's see how the traps do. Traps, are you going to protect me from my own inability to plan and reasonably execute? I don't know if that actually lit them all on fire, but it does seem to have thinned out the wave pretty good. Fire traps, man. Maybe fire traps are what I've been missing, and that's why I always wipe on, like, the third wave. Maybe that's what it is. I haven't used fire traps up until this run, and so the fire traps are actually pretty spicy. Orc Warboss is over here. We're going to need to kill him before too long. This battle has raged on for, like, 15 days, and it took them, like, 15 days to walk down the hallway to my base. Are you going to die, bro? Please don't die. I'll appreciate you more if you don't die. All right, so we've got the little pub tavern thing. Let's put that in. Give the engineers something to work on since none of our workforce died. I was actually assuming that some piece of my army was going to die right there. And so since nobody died, we actually just need to get them healed up. And now we've got like a baseline level of dudes that are protecting our society. The other thing that we can do is if I can split off the wounded ones and we take only the healthy ones, we can break this barricade over here and we can get access to more gold. Although I think this gold right here, we're going to have to build another mine over here just to make it drop off faster. I don't think there's going to be any way around that. So you guys all pull in over here. You guys are mining away on valuable nodes every night and day. Show them the way, okay? Uh, over here, nothing. I'm not going to pop that open just yet. I'm not going to pop that open just yet. I'm just going to stick with what I've got for right now. All right, let's go fight some spiders. Spider fighting fools. Engineer, don't do it. You can't fight. Please don't go in here day and night. All right. Kill off some spiders. Engineers, stop doing what you're doing. I know you desperately want to perform percussive maintenance on this area and install torches, but for the love of God, please stop. I would like to have, like, a way to select tiles and be like, beautify this or basically forbid beautifying an area until you've got it cleared because constantly microing your little dudes can be kind of a headache and a hassle. All right, so looking at what we've got inside of here, we don't actually have any more enemies to deal with. So let's bring them back up to the front. And we are officially generating food, which is great. The tavern is 250. And I do think we should build that. Although where I can build that, I don't know. I'll put it right there with a minecart running out front because obviously that's how we do efficiency around here. Uh, you guys can now harvest pretty much all these walls over here. So let's get my miners back to work. And we'll just get them going and chunking away at tiles and, you know, making money and making happiness and all that kind of stuff. I don't really care what they mine for right now. As long as they mine something, they're going to be bringing in trickles of gold, which is not great. Oh, good. The orcs are coming again, too. Fantastic. Orcs are coming. Gonna bite me in my face. Okay, so I modified the tracks right there. I should probably also put down lights. I wish that lights didn't cost any gold, because I can't really tell what lights actually do, except increase your line of sight. You can't see anything in the fog of war. But I kind of wish they still had the build time, but they were free. I would actually use them a lot more frequently if they worked like that. Normally, I just wait for the engineers to install torches everywhere, but... Did they just ride the minecart back, dude? Oh, the engineers were riding the minecart to get to the lamp. Gotcha. Okay, well, either way, we should be moving a little bit faster, and now we have illumination in this area, so I can actually, like, see and fiddle with the stuff that I actually want to fiddle with. We got another cave over there. We got a few more valuable nodes over on this side. 
And so in the interest of keeping the valuable nodes under operation, I'm just going to take them off that job. The orcs are halfway here, which sucketh. I wish that was not the case. But I wish a lot of things were not the case in life. And honestly, life has never adapted its trajectory in order to, you know, fix that for me. Uh, I need all my warriors over here. They're all healed up, which is great. I think they go to the tavern to eat food, but they don't return back to the rally point that you've set. So that's another thing that's going to be looked at. But yeah, that needs to be looked at anyways. But this is beneath the mountain. A couple of things that I've seen. So I like the art style. I love the textures. I think the game looks great. I think all the interactions feel good. I would like to be able to target enemies specifically RTS style. On top of that, um, there are some lag issues. So you get frame drops when you zoom in and zoom out for whatever reason. And then when there's a lot of units on screen, the game has severe performance issues. So that's going to need to be sorted out. I would like to hear unit confirmations, make them disableable or whatever else you want to do. Uh, when is he going to come over here and actually, like, eat the food? Oh, there he goes. Sweet, dude. I think, actually, they could make it so the food full heals him, too. The 100 HP doesn't feel very generous. But, like, I don't know. One food full heals a guy that goes and eats after it. I don't know. But then again, it has a tendency to, like, pile up in between fights, too. They're halfway here, and we've got 400 gold. We've got to make, like, a crunch time decision. Like, I can get after, like, metallurgy and stuff. Or I can increase my pop cap. Or we can spend that 400 building another mine over here so that they drop off money faster. Honestly, I feel like money is what we're really struggling with, so I think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to build a mine drop off right here so that we don't even need this railway anymore. And then they can just, like, giga mine this area. Yep, just completely and totally, like, giga bang all these walls right here. I think that would be something that I'm interested in. Oh wow, that built really quickly. And on the top side, I'm not wasting my time either because that increases my, my amount of gold that I can store anyways. I've never topped out my gold, but I assume it's a problem for somebody. But yeah, it has performance issues. That's one thing that I've noticed. The game is very, very difficult. I don't necessarily count that against the game. Uh, I don't think that's fair to levy against the game and be like, oh, the game is hard. Some games are meant to be hard, and I don't know if that's intended. But I have really struggled with this game. However, I am enjoying it, and I love the art style, and I love the way the buildings look, and I love the general idea of kind of a Dungeon Keeper RTS. And so anyways, let me know what you think. Go check out the game on itch.io. Play it for yourself. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day, so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Beneath the Mountain. Tomorrow, we will definitely have something else for you to peruse. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Helps me out as a content creator. And I will see you all later. Bye, everybody.